happening here. I heard God said it into my spirit. Uh, put the first thing first. Those that are in most need of me, put them first. Yes. The rest of us that are looking for a strong word and the rest of the word, we are kind of all right in a sense. Amen. We can process the word of God. But those that are there, uh, to them in many can say to a, many, to a large degree, it will be almost like nonsense because they, they need the Holy Ghost. They, they need the God inhabiting their bodies. And uh, when you're giving this kind of pedigree stuff, uh, uh, you get carried away sometimes and it does not lend itself necessarily to those who are seeking for the Holy Ghost. Yes, they can get it, but if the atmosphere ain't pointing in that direction, they are at a disadvantage. And we don't want anybody to be at a disadvantage. This is the kind of thing that we need to be doing in church now. Be, be sensitive to what the Holy Ghost is saying. Yeah, so, so if some can go and tarry with them, Amen. let some go and tarry while we, while we talk a little bit about God. Amen. Am I talking up in here? Amen. We've got to be multifaceted. Amen. Uh, Lord Jesus, we've got to be serious. Are you still with me? Praise Amen. God. I hope you're not mad with me. Praise Amen. God. And I hope you don't block my card and I don't get to go home. Praise God. I'm just trying to follow the Holy Ghost. And so last night we were talking about activating the creation process and we tabernacled amen on the I am what God says I am notion we we walk through the fact that God does everything in seed form and he always leads the way before he tells us to walk in the way hence anything that God requires of us as human beings he has already walked in it as the human being Christ manifested in the flesh and oh if he has not done it as the Christ in the flesh. He has done it as the creator from the beginning of time. And that is why now, last night, we spoke about the creative process where God stood in Genesis and he commanded and God said and God saw and God called, right? And we went down to the other degree where God blessed and then God charged. So God said, let there be light there was light. Uh, God saw that the light came. Then God called the light day and the darkness he called it night. He never blessed that aspect. Amen. That is uh, something that doesn't require blessing. It is fixed. It is anointed to function in a certain capacity and God don't need to bless it. He has already ordained it. Now when we look a little bit further now, we see where God made the animals uh, and the moving things, the things that you know have some form Amen. Of independence and autonomy. They are not just working by an automatic clock, you know. There is something else in them. So those things that have instincts, uh, like the animals and the other things, uh, the Bible says that God blessed them. And then God charged them to multiply. So the cow got a blessing to multiply. And the dog and the cat uh, and all the other things, amen, that are moving, they got a blessing from God that they should multiply. Now, there's another degree to it now, and it's an exclusive category, which is that of Adam, the man generation. When God formed man, now it's the only part of the creation where it is said that God formed. It's another term, speaking of a more intimate, amen, approach and a more intimate uh, interaction with the thing being created. Uh, God saw it so important that he came down now and he formed man. Now, I don't know how big God's fingers are. And I'm not interested to find out. Amen. But what I know, the Bible says that God formed man. Whether he uses his right hand, his left hand, or his right foot, it don't matter because what matters is that God formed man. Whether it took five billion years in earth years now or a half a trillion, it's none of my business. What is my business is that God formed man out of the dust of the earth. And then God breathed into man and man became a living soul. And the Bible goes on in the same writing of the Genesis to say that God blessed man. Yes, he did. Like he did the cow and the chinchilla. Amen. And the monkey. Eh? He blessed man. And he gave man the same commandment. He says be fruitful and multiply. However, however and however, there is 
a different command also given to human beings. And that command is to subdue the earth and to have a dominion. Hello, somebody, praise the Lord. So it means that in all of the proper, the creative work of God, as he increases in the intricacy and the profundity of the creation, he gives greater instincts, he gives greater charge, and he also gives greater authority. So whatever God had created, he blessed it according to its function, and then he charged it according to its purpose. And so, God, we, we looked into that, and we see now we're, uh, we started to deal with the fact that you've got to identify yourself with the, the creation of God. Which aspect of the creation do you belong to? Are you a tree? Are you a son? Are you a dog? Are you a frog? I didn't say if you have a dog spirit or a frog spirit. Some people come to church and they have a dog spirit. Praise the Lord. And some people come to church and they have a frog spirit. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying if you are a physiologically a dog or a cat or a puss or a cow or a hog or are you a human being? Once you are a human being, you come under the, the category of being blessed and charged to subdue and to have dominion in the earth. Somebody lift up the right hand and declare, I am charged to have a dominion in the earth. And so God willing to, amen, make us what he ought to be. He chose us and he purposed us. And now I've got to leapfrog into the church. Amen. Because a lot of this stuff, you can really get lost. Amen. In the wilderness of revelation. My God. Amen. Like Avatar. I wonder if you hear what I'm saying. You can go in the spirit realm and just get lost. Because God is so deep. He's so wide. He, he is just so, my God, incomprehensible. Lord Jesus. So, I gotta come to the church now where we've got to identify that we are human beings. We also must identify that we are the seed of Abraham and therefore and hear of the promise that is unto Abraham because God said that in thee Abraham shall all nations or families of the world be blessed. So once you are a descendant of Abraham, whether by direct genealogy or by faith, you are blessed according to the Abrahamic blessing. You must also now be identified as whether or not you are an ear of God and a joint ear with Jesus Christ. Because before you can activate the creative process, you have got to have the creative access. So if you don't have the access, you cannot utilize the process. I'm going somewhere with this. My God, when it comes to the church now, you've got to identify your spiritual gifting and the anointing that is upon your life. Why? Because anybody born into the kingdom of God, you are fitted and kitted with some level of anointing. I don't care how ugly you look. Hallelujah. You are anointed. Once you have the Holy Ghost, I don't care whether you just came off the street. If God fill you with the Holy Ghost, you have got an anointing. And you better believe it. It doesn't matter whether or not anybody identifies you. What matters is that God has already identified you once he gives you the Holy Ghost. You see this is why it is important to wait until you receive the Holy Ghost because only God can give you the Holy Ghost. Any and everybody can jump up in the pool and say deep me and you get a hog wash or a man wash but only God who sees the heart and knows that you're really repentant will give you the Holy Ghost. It's the heart that matters. It's not what you confess. It's what you are in your heart. That is why a dreadlocks and an eye and eye brother will be smoking a serious spliff. A real Arnold hardcore sentinel sitting on the wall in a churchyard. And the moment the word hit the rest and the man said hi and I want to feel something and it's not the ganja and the poor can say it's not ganja it's some raka ta 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 coming out of him and you wonder why you wonder why and you and some of us have to be here sodding like a body soap and can't get the Holy Ghost something is off the dreadlocks right under the ganja smoke when it's hard it's right when God Marco Shire God realizes that he's ready for the power and fills him stink like 
kind. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. Never been to a Sunday school. Never heard about the oneness. I know there is something. My kind of a hoof. I got a whole lot of dread. Why? It's a heart was ready. So all that's remaining is for him to do the other part to just get baptized. That believe it and he's baptized. You don't need to ask if you believe if you have the Holy Ghost. That's the only way to get it is to believe. Alright? Okay? So we have to understand that once God has anointed you, it is God that has said, You are mine. Amen. And once God says, You are mine. It means the identification of you as being God's prerogative means that God has a purpose for you. Amen. There are no experts in church. Once you get the Holy Ghost, you have an anointing to operate in the church. Well, I have to say this. Amen. Stop holding down people. Amen. Amen. When somebody has the Holy Ghost yes. and they begin to manifest their gift, yes. do not hold them down and tie them up. Amen. 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 I'm not going to get much here. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. has the Holy Ghost and God is ready to use them. Yes, sir. Come on, Tani Wee. Yes. Get out of there. I'm not going to do it you have to do it more. That's why some of you don't know that you don't have it either. We are a knockoff. Yes, sir, yes, sir. You don't have it either. You don't want it. Not even when there's a mosquito or a cockroach. You can't tell fly because you're dry like cockroach. You don't have no Holy Ghost. You kill a Messiah and I'll be a king in it. That's not how I come from the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost gets inside of you, the spirit that is in you will recognize that it is the same spirit. You will be a witness. No kufu shaya. Kufu shaya. So how you clear that Holy Ghost? And nobody can pass through on the field ministry. Some room. Something wrong, sir. Let me hear myself. The mother is giving me trouble. Go ahead. So once God has anointed you, He has purposed you. He has placed you in the kingdom. Your anointing is ready to run. You might not understand all the depths and the permutations and the parameters of your anointing and the implications of your gifting. But what you show is you're ready to move. For once you're willing and ready to obey God, if God said bark like a dog, bark like a dog, if God said move like a cow up here, he don't move. I say in God's sake, run up the eye three times. You get the power for your glutes maximum. Walk out of your blessed assurance and move. Yes, yes, yes. Because when the Holy Hallelujah. Ghost is in charge, those are the sons of God. If you're not obeying the yes, Spirit, you are a bastard picnic. You are a full fledged jacket. Oh Lord. Because if the Holy Ghost is in you and God is leading you, you ought to follow. So you have to know your purpose. You have to identify your mind. Why this thing is a serious up in here? You got to know who you are in the kingdom. You got to know what kind of anointing is resting on you. That way you won't waste your time outside of your call. Amen. The moment you take the choir, everybody start croak. Everybody start to go Not a soul can get it what right. Yes, sir. Somebody's willing, but they just not like it. Yes, sir. 
God. Hallelujah. I wish we would begin to understand that we must find where we fit and fit in yeah. to function. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're not ready, my friend. Yes, yes. So you have to identify your purpose. The next thing is you must also now recognize your season. What season you are in. Whether you are in the bright chain moment now. Now is not the time to be just playing out. Then let me pick on the maestro. It's not time now for him to be playing on that six baby or seven. It's time for him to begin to teach some of them young ones here. A few notes. He's going up another level. So he's not just the player now. He's the razor of the platform. He now becomes not just a seed. He's now a tree. And other boys that have talent and have anointing, amen, they feel something when they hear him play. And they come on their eyes, you know, are glued. And he allows them to touch the thing. And when they touch it, they say, hold on. You feel something other than the music from the vibration. You feel the anointing pushing. You say, my God, you step it up a level. Because now you are just a player. But now you are a door opener. You become now a granddaddy in the church. You become one of the spiritual wounds through which the anointing get channeled and focused, groomed and optimized in them that have the same anointing, but they are juniors, they are not quite ready, but they are hungry to learn, and your anointing is of that level now, where you can begin to train them, where you can begin to raise them, I know people don't want to hear these kind of things in church anymore, everybody want two hallelujah, three hallelujah, and seven amen, and you go home, jump up and down, amen, I care about the clothes that you borrowed from um, Blooming here. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. Amen, but it's time for us to get serious up in here and realize that the atmosphere that we are in, we need even the babies to know how to use a spiritual tabla. I wonder if I'm in the right church. We need a newborn to understand war because we won't have time to always be protecting them. We will need them to stand up on the front line. Six-year-old with a holy ghost bazooka kata shaya. Matthew Tobi hit me. Hallelujah. A seven-year-old prophet pastor standing up in the congregation and saying, Don't set God. He kata shaya. And then the seven-year-old saying under the holy ghost. It comes to pass. We need to understand what season we are in. Thank you, Jesus. But here is the problem. Because we do not perfect our anointing. We procreate after the order of our level. So since we are mediocre, one pop prior, an emergency fast syndrome we have. Unless you say you can't say you don't remember Jesus. Unless you're telling him thanks to the food after you swallow it. Hallelujah. Oh yes. So we, we procreate, we bring forth what is in us. So if we are not living at the level of optimizing our anointing, we will not bring forth that kind of a level in our students. Hello, I want a master to teach me. I don't want an understudy. I want a grandma to show me how to keep my anointing and behave myself. I want a mama to eye me in the church until I am blinded to everything else but the Holy Ghost. I want a father to when he grumbles in the Holy Ghost, I feel like God says, sit on study and behave yourself. We need a higher level of matured manifestation. Not only want to make me mess up the little message. Hallelujah. We need to understand the times because the times in which we are living is very, very crucial. Very. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, right? Then the Holy Ghost lifts a standard. If you can't interpret what is going on in your time, you will not be able to move with the leading of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Alright, one time. Now move on. How do you know what season you are living in? We have got to check the prophetic calendar against the signs of the times. So what we got to do is look at the signs of the time and match it with the prophetic calendar of God. You got to look in the word and realize that we are indeed in the time of the sign of Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Amen. We have to look at the calendar, the prophetic calendar, and realize we are in the time of the sign of Noah. 
Amen. Amen. We must also discern, determine our discern, not just the season, but the accurate point in time that we are. Okay? Where are we? Hello? Is it time to plow? Is it time to put seed in the earth? Is it time to water the crop? Is it time to push it? Is it, is it time to spray it, you know, with better bloom or whatever you have up in your side? Is, is it time, amen, to get some bad guano, you know? You gotta get some bat guano, you know, you have pine and you want it to be sweet. Yeah. You get some rat bat poop, you know, and you put it on that pine plant, it scratch it short. Praise you. Amen. You don't know what I'm talking about. Amen, amen. amen. Yes. But you have to understand the time. You got to know when it is time to add the fertilizer. Yes. And what kind of a fertilizer yes. to add. Whether it's high in nitrogen or low in nitrogen and high in phosphorus and high in potassium and low in magnesium. I don't want to sing in Latin to some of y'all, praise the Lord, but you need to hear it in Latin to understand it in English better. Can we praise the Lord, somebody? Don't go home and praise God. I know you're at church tomorrow, but God might come tonight, 12 o'clock. Hallelujah, so stop worrying. Hallelujah. You've got to understand, therefore, what, what time it is, right? In order that you might know how to use your anointing, it is time now to activate the creative process. Now, now, what God has put in my spirit is this. Whatever God demonstrates, he wants us to emulate. Yes. Amen. So here is God. Mm -hmm. He demonstrated how you deal with a world that's out of order. Jesus. So first you identify and evaluate. What do you see? The earth was without form and void. And void. Can the Holy Ghost talk to us tonight? Amen. Look in our lives and see what is out of divine order. Jesus Christ. Amen. Temporal order, out of temporal order. Formless and void. You know what that communicates? Out of purpose orientation. So there is substance, but the substance is marshaled to suit a purpose. It is there in potential form. But it needs the purpose program. Yes. Jesus Christ. Stay with me. Look and see what's out of alignment with the intent of God's counsel. What in your life is in rebellion to the counsel of God? Are you here with me tonight? Amen. Jesus Christ. What is disobedient in you? What is satanic and demonic? In you, and When you should be praying, you're gaining out of order. When you should be fasting, you're fattening out of order. When you should be repenting, you're living la vida loca. <laughs> Your head, sir. Out of order. Out of order. Out of order. Shouting. Hallelujah. Now you've got a hoof. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're hiding in the back skirts. Yes. Yes. Oh, 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 you are a carrier of a unique weapon. You are the sniper. Shut up. Oh, hey. But you hide in the back of the army. Oh, Snipers go before. They stay above. They have vantage point. They have stereoscopic view. Like a shadow. Their hands are steady. Their eyes are accurate. And you can see what they're at the wrong place in the church. Holy Ghost.
What in your life is out of agreement with the revelation knowledge and the kingdom of God? What in our life is out of alignment? Is in darkness because revelation speaks of illumination. It speaks of the ability to perceive accurately yes. Jesus Christ. Which aspect of our life is out of revelation knowledge? It's so dark. You don't know whether you're coming or you're going. You don't know whether you're still anointed. You know you used to be. I mean, you know the shake. My God, you know when you do something wrong, come you can feel any jiggy. As your body accustomed to it. But nothing generating from here. So I saw some reason blow by you. So there's nothing inside. I tell you, neighbor, I need a rumble in my tongue. I need a fire in my belly. I need a river to bubble out. I'm an innermost beam. You know when the pen and I can hit you. No I cheat ministry who are you? You I'm saying? My God, when that kind of anointing blast you. Oh Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What in your life is out of agreement with revelation knowledge? It is the indictment against the Sodomic generation in Romans 1 that after that they know him as God, they never serve him. But this is very deep and profound. It means that when God has given you revelation as to who you are, as to what you're supposed to do, as to what the next move is, if you refuse to do it, you are bordering on being cursed to go into searing of mind and wantonness of fleshly loss. After that we know God as God, that anybody else knows him like you know him, you got to live at the level that you know God. I know him. You know, on A level. So that's all I can speak of. You know him from A to Z. And rather than live at the Z level, you camp out at the A level. Like that's all you know. Because the devil is going to come after you. Not because of what you profess but what has been conferred on you your warfare is proportionate to your anointing All right. so what we have to do is to assess and evaluate what in our life is under darkness check it shine on me oh, shine on me Do what? Shine on me. Shine on me. Show me where I'm standing. Hallelujah! In the middle of demons and princes are holding you down, but you can't see it. You're on a sin's dread sleep. God says somebody here is in a spiritual cage. The devil has locked you up and given you a candle and given you a sanky. And all you can do is read at the candlelight and sing the sanky. But you will never reach a level where the light that is in you shine and illuminate your world. Hallelujah. Move over the face of the depth of your formlessness and your void. I'm seeing you somebody in here. Don't tune me out yet. I know half our God already. Thank you, Jesus. But I just want to finish up a little more. Thank you, Jesus. What in you is void. What in you is dead. What is in you is out of line with revelation knowledge. What in you is walking according to ignorance. What in you is walking according to the dogma of the world. What inside of us is earthbound. Hallelujah. Yet professing a heavenly minded. Yes, we claim that we are going to heaven. And yet we spend more time chasing the Bugatti. We spend more time chasing the Mirelli. We spend more time chasing the Louis Vuitton. We spend more time chasing Amen, the hot and the this and the that. And we spend the least amount of time tarrying right before the altar of incense and saying Father, I want you to come and take my every part. We spend more time seeking after that which matters the least at the expense of that which matters the most. It's all because we are in a formless and avoid staying. I know it's getting to some people in here. I know it's getting to some people. I know it's getting to some people. They evaluate where you are. Where are the formless ears of your anointing? Where are the formless ears of your ministry? You're gifted. You're, you have the capacity to teach people. And the PA 
PhD level and yet you camp out at the associate level and God is saying I want you now to raise up doctors I want you to raise up men and women that don't need to be told your ABCs they can write new languages they can develop new disciplines but because you don't want to move because you're happy camping out at level B you don't want nobody to know that you have level C in you because when you're traveling at a very high speed the laws of physics must be dealt with at a higher level of precision or else you're going to die the more you're traveling the spirit realm is it cleaner you have to be but you don't want that flesh don't want to be clean come on can I speak the truth over here hallelujah you want to do your little thingy thingy but God is saying no thingy thingy up in here it's time to put on the thingy thingy and take out the ring a ling thing heaven a come ready on Lord have mercy we got to move on the next level is we've got to apply our purpose with our anointing we have to come into the place now where we agree with the mandate of heaven over our life what did God do? God moved over the face of the deep and then he began to speak yes. hallelujah when he moved when he assessed and evaluated then he come and began to speak what? the purpose back into the formlessness he agreed with the mandate of heaven and verbally declared it into the earth as it is in heaven, so it is on earth. Let there be light. The light replaces the darkness. When we look in our lives and we see we are out of work, speak the mandate of heaven over the formlessness and the void over your life. Yeah? You are not praying, you get up and say, let there be prayerfulness in my spirit. Thank you. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. Jesus says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. He says, my word, once it has left me, it cannot come back to me, boy. It must accomplish that for which it was shown. So if we have our daddy seed in us, we can do what our daddy tells us to do. Speak it, write it, establish it. Do what God has said. Let there be. As per what God has already determined. And said. A lot of times we are saying things, but it's not what God is saying. We are declaring things. I have a house. When God said, no, you have a condo. Yes. <laughs> we are declaring, I have a Benz. When God said, no, you're driving a Lexus. You're saying, I have a Browning. When God said, no, you need a darkening. <laughs> yes. You are declaring, I have a top down and have some God. I say, no, you need a short, stocky, and sh What you declare must be in line and alignment with what God says. And the only way to know that is to get in 